Right. Welcome to our next session. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Ben Taylor. Now, Ben is a true hardcore authority on all things artificial intelligence. Um, he works at Rainbird AI, but he's also got a degree in artificial intelligence from the University of Sussex, and he's an active member of the All Party Parliamentary Group on artificial intelligence as, as well. And he's actually recognized uh, pretty much globally as a, a, an expert in this area. And so he's gonna give us a view on, actually one of the topics I find most fascinating in this area is about bias and the trans, uh, transparency and governance in automated decision making. And as I was saying in my opening comments, bias is one of the hot topics in the press. So this is gonna be a really, uh, this is a really important point around this whole area of AI. So Ben, over to you. Great, thank you so much. A hardcore authority. I think that's the first time I've been introduced like that. So, hey, everybody, it's a pleasure to be here. My name's Ben. I am a CTO and co founder of Rainbird. So, I'll tell you a little bit about Rainbird later on in this talk. Rainbird is a leading automation platform uh, that businesses are using. Really, it's about scaling human expertise within organizations. So, I am going to talk to you today a bit about bias and transparency, and particularly about governance in automated decision making. And I'll talk about uh, what I mean when I say automated decision making in just a minute. I'll describe why bias and transparency, governance, those kinds of things are important and how we approach them and how we can introduce new models to help with supporting understanding what this might mean when we're automating decisions, uh, particularly when those decisions are being automated on the basis of data. And I'll give you a little bit of background uh, into what we do at Rainbird and uh, introduce some of our emerging R&D, which is particularly interesting in this space. Um, but before I go any further, um, I think it's important to make a distinction uh, between analysis and AI. And you'll just have to forgive me, for some reason my slides aren't progressing. Uh, bear with me two seconds. Let's try this again. Sorry about that. We'll try it like this. Hopefully, you can, hopefully that's that's still working for you. So we need to make a. Oh, it's still not still not working. We'll do it like this. Uh, before we go any further, I want to make a distinction between analysis and automation because I think very often organisations conflate statistical analysis of data or machine learning with automation. Now, machine learning is really, I want to put machine learning in kind of into an analysis bucket. Machine learning is about revealing insights in data. It can make predictions, but predictions are not necessarily decisions, but particularly decision, predictions that are made from data. And what I want to talk about is automation. And, and analysis is quite distinct from automation. What I mean by automation is really about the mechanization of work that humans are doing. And that's quite different from analysis. So this talk is going to focus on automation on the right-hand slide that you see on the screen. Now, obviously, a lot of the narrative around AI, uh, particularly in machine learning, which is, which is often very data-led, uh, focuses on bias in decision-making. You may have seen recent Netflix documentaries, Coded Bias, um, or maybe read there's a really amazing book by Cathy O'Neill, Weapons of Math Destruction, which talks about some of this stuff. Automated decision-making, when it relies on machine learning, a, the bias that is embedded in data suddenly starts to present very significant challenges. And we'll talk about some of those challenges in, in, in just a moment, and actually being able to quantify the size of this problem. Now, in the UK in particular, we lack a kind of comprehensive regulatory framework for AI. And I think the closest kind of thing that we have is Article 22 of the GDPR, which is actually pretty clear, and it stipulates that firms must regularly check for bias and accuracy in their systems and feed any changes back into the design of those systems. And actually, in principle, GDPR also obliges you to take steps to prevent errors and bias and discrimination in automated decisions, particularly when they relate to an individual. Now, we do have the new AI strategy that was announced by government a couple of weeks ago, and that does signal a move in the UK towards greater regulation. And actually, I think perhaps signals a move away from GDPR and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next 12 months or so. But actually, putting all of that to one side, organizations are beginning to take their own ethical standpoints on AI and automated decision making and reflect this across company wide policies. Uh, according to HBR, companies like 
Google, Microsoft, BMW, Deutsche Telekom, and others are all developing formal AI policies that commits them to safety, fairness, diversity, and privacy, which when you look at some of the challenges around bias in data, does the question rises, does that really mean that they can't move from analysis to full automation? Well, to answer that question, I think it's really important to look at the considerations that we have to make when we're talking about automating decision-making. What should we be paying close attention to? Well, first of all, bias, or at least the effects of bias, need to be minimized as far as possible. Any automated decision-making system should proactively seek to diminish the effects of any bias created at the level of system structure. So that might mean aiming to use high quality data sources, and I'll talk in a moment about what we mean by data sources and where some of the challenges are there. Any system should aim to be as transparent as possible so that people who are implementing the automation have complete visibility over how those decisions are being reached and can easily explain uh, the reasons behind a decision if and when they need to. So perhaps when a regulator or an auditor comes to call to ask them about why you're making decisions. And of course, it should come with provision for governance protocols where human expertise and oversight have the final to say in every decision that's being made. Now, we'll talk about governance some more in a moment because that becomes very key to the way this works. So of course, lots of machine learning algorithms, machine learning rely on large amounts of data. That's really what we're talking about here. And the predictions that those algorithms are making are really going to depend on the quality of the data that's being used, very often, particularly for the kinds of decisions that we might be automating when we're trying to build an end-to-end -end automation. But data quality varies. Why does data quality vary? Well, one of the biggest reasons that it, it, why is that a lot of the data that we might be using for training these systems, which are going to be deployed into production to make automated decisions, rely on historical output of prior human judgment. That means that we might be encoding prior human biases in those data that we're then going to roll forwards into the decisions that we're making in the future. And human judgment has flaws. So if human judgment is flawed, very often what we need to be doing is paying special attention to how we counter the effects of those flaws in our automated decision-making processes. Now this slide comes from, actually comes from Daniel Kahneman, Nobel Prize winning uh, economist and psychologist, author of Thinking Fast and Slow, uh, and more recently actually author of a very interesting book called Noise that's made a big splash and is, is quite relevant to this discussion. I think it's very well understood that human decision-making uh, is subject to a whole raft of different biases. There are hundreds of different biases. I'm not going to go and uh, dig into each of these here. It's a very well-researched and very well-understood uh, field. However, noise uh, is, uh, bias is not the only problem here. Human decision-making is also affected by what Daniel Kahneman called noise. Now, if you think about bias in decision-making, noise is kind of everything else that could go wrong in the way that a person goes about making a decision. It's the chance of variability in judgment. The quality of decisions that you or I make every day are affected by a whole load of things, some in our control and some outside of our control. Things like how much sleep you've had, whether you're tired or hungry, or whether you're working in a different environment to where you're used to working. Noise affects everybody, even people who are absolute experts in the fields, judges, clinicians, people who are involved in insurance underwriting and so on. Everybody is in, every decision is impacted by noise. So when you think about decisioning, bias tends to be consistently wrong, decisions cluster, but are probably off target. But when you introduce noise in decision and alongside a biased decision, now you've got something that is very hard to go and cater for and counter for. And this is a big problem. And this matters to most organizations. And the reason why it matters to most organizations is because this can introduce real life uh, financial consequences to the cost of inconsistent decision making. And actually there've been a number of attempts to quantify the size of this problem. This is, this is just one of those attempts. Actually, two researchers at Cambridge University recently studied a major international bank, and the way their staff were making loan risk liability and onboarding decisions. And they found, really interestingly, that loan approvals would regress to the mean approval level, in this case, about 39% of approvals, the closer they got to their lunch break, or the closer they got to needing to take a rest. And now the researchers then looked at that across the way the decision should have been made and estimated that this was actually costing the bank somewhere in the region of half a million dollars every single month. And that's for one decision in one bank. So whether it's bias in data or actually bias in human decision making, there are some pretty difficult problems here and pretty, pretty sizable opportunities, in fact, 
um, when implementing automated decision making. Now, of course, there are other ways than just machine learning to go and implement automated decision making. And one of those ways is Rainbird. So I'm going to introduce Rainbird to you, and then we'll look at what that might mean if you're starting from data in your organization. So Rainbird is an automation platform that uses logic-based rules. Uh, one time, I think we would probably have called this something like symbolic AI or logical inference. Rainbird is really about modeling human priors, capturing all the ambiguity and subjectivity and nuance in the way people go about making decisions. And typically data for Rainbird is something that we're making inferences over the top rather than something we're starting with, like as you would in uh, machine learning. But this opens the door to us being able to bring in our own models of human governance alongside a machine learning decision to counter for the effects of bias in data. Now, I don't have a whole load of time to cover this in detail, but just as an example of what a uh, Rainbird model like, might look like, what you can see on the screen there is what we call a knowledge map. And that's kind of the core of all the different things that we're making actually for every intelligent automation project that we've been involved with, whether it's a large multinational accounting firm or the NHS or other financial institutions that we've been doing work with. They will start with, with a map like this. And typically what you're doing with Rainbird is you're modeling a recurring decision that you want to automate. But critically, because it's logic based, it can explain the reasons for its answer. So you ask Rainbird a question, it eventually gives you an answer. We're able to produce the whole chain of reasoning that Rainbird's been through in giving that answer. And that's really important when you want to understand where there might be biases in the data that's being used, particularly if you've got a machine learned decision as part of that process. So if Rainbird's giving you the ability to model and replicate human decision-making and human judgment, but we shouldn't forget the fact that actually to get the most value out of data, we can't just rely solely on models of human expertise. Of course, we will recognize the sheer magnitude of the potential for kind of data first machine learning algorithms. But in many cases, there's a, a sort of proof of concept to production gap that's very hard to effectively bridge when you're starting from data. And that's often because those issues of bias and transparency and governance mean that making deploying a purely machine learned approach into production in the real world is actually very difficult. So what we really need is a way of to enable businesses to bridge that gap, to let machine learned predictions safely become automated decisions that we can go and take action on off the other end. And for that, we need a piece in the middle of machine that, that bridges a machine learned prediction to a logic based AI that turns a prediction into a decision. Now, while it might be hard to remove bias from your data, we believe that to effectively minimize the effects of bias in data, you need a good governance framework. And therefore, in order to turn prediction into decision, if you're going to automate it, you need a technology that can effectively and transparently automate that governance process. So unsurprisingly, this is something that we think about a lot at Rainbird, and actually has been the primary focus of our research and development effort over the last couple of years. So what I'm Introducing now, what I'm actually talking about is hot off the press. This is new uh, piece of piece of functionality that we're we're bringing to market right now, and actually, you're one of the first groups of people that we've introduced this to. And this is a product that we're calling Rainbird AutoML. Now, that's really an automated decision solution that combines the best of machine learning with the best of explainable logic AI. In other words, combining the best of statistical inference with the best of logical inference. So this is designed for business, and it's a best in class. A uh, piece of software that minimizes the effects of bias. It removes noise from your decision making while maintaining transparency and enabling governance protocols to be easily implemented. So, kind of in practice, what does this look like? Well, our AutoML product takes you through a process of automatic data engineering, model training, deploying machine learned algorithm into production that you can actually make decisions from. However, crucially, we also gather metadata along the way from that process, which is everything that you might want to know about your training data, everything that you might want to know about the way a model was built or the way a prediction was made about your data. So for example, you might be trying to make decisions in an automated way about your customers, and you might want to know that a particular customer was well represented in your training data on the basis of, let's say, age, for example, that, that you know that your training data might be biased against a particular customer on the basis of age, and you want to be able to see that. And that's the sort of thing which becomes available in the metadata that underpins the way this auto ML process is running. And that allows you to build rainbow models that combine prediction with metadata, your own governance requirements to turn that prediction into decision. This is really about encoding governance that allows you to counter the effects of bias in your decisions in your decision making. Now metadata helps you expose those bias and helps you 
build what ultimately becomes an end to end automation, which once you've done that, you effectively remove noise from your process altogether. So now you've got something which is countering the bias and removing noise and then becomes scalable. If you're interested in finding out about more about this, we have a community of people who are who are building these kinds of things, tackling these, tackling some of these problems and discussing this. If you go to community.rainbow.ai, you will see that community there. Actually, you can come and explore our platform. You can come and uh, create yourselves accounts and, and play around with our decision platform, our workflow orchestration platform. Also, ML products not not in there yet, but it's still a great place to come and find out more about this world and about what we're doing. I'm always happy to come and talk talk to people. So if you want to get in touch and, and come and build along a demo with me or uh, find out more. Uh, then I'd be very happy to spend some time with you. And that's me done. Thank you for your time. Great, Ben. Thank you very much. Uh, personally, I think this whole area of bias, bias and transparency is probably one of the biggest single challenges in the whole AI uh, universe. We had a discuss discussions yesterday about data wrangling and all this other kind of data manipulation, but I think this whole bias issue is probably going to be one of the biggest issues that we've got uh, going forward. Isn't it? So thank you very much for your insights uh, on that particular area, Ben. So I'm going to bring this session to a close, and then I'll see you uh, uh, on the next link. Uh, if you look, click on the next session on your feed, li feed, feed loop, and uh, we'll hear from Alex Healing, who's going to talk about human machine collaborative analytics. Nothing to do with RoboCop or Terminator. Trust me on that one. Thank you very much.